Hey guys, here's Louie. So check out the project I have going on in the garage. Yep, I'm really grateful that I have some space now, free up. And after the project that is getting done in the basement is um, done, I will have even more space. But I'm going to show you guys how I got this floor ready with measurements and everything i'm up to the point of just welding it in and my goal is to install it on the bird all in one piece one complete piece the positive and also the little bit of negative that it could cost you but let me share with you guys some tools so to do this job i basically use a grinder with a grinding disc a grinder with a cutoff wheel, an impact um, drill here with a 5 8 um, bit to drive in these um, self tappers that I like to use. Okay, and this little bin right here already have done three cars. Sometimes you will need to put an extension to drive these self tappers depending where you're going on the location of the car. A drill with a bit. Um, this bit here is as simple as you go to Harbor Free and pick it up. There goes the measurements and everything. The reason I like to use this bit is because sometimes these self tappers are very difficult to drive into the metal. So if you do a little pilot hole, they won't fight you as much. And a hammer. I will tell you why you're going to need a hammer like this for getting your sheet metal ready. Here, your sheet metal being the complete floor. So, those that follow me knows that I am building a 68 Firebird convertible for my wife. And, this being a convertible, your floor will have a brace. This is for the first gen F body convertible cars. You have extra bracing on the car because it needs to be more stable, more strong, more durable. Because, of course, it doesn't have a roof like a coupe so the floor being strong is even 10 times more important than a coupe so by factory they added some more bracing so that's these bracing are for convertibles they go all the way to the front and the end here hanging goes to your torque boxes welded on the torque boxes you also have this frame here this convertible middle section frame that i made a video on this happens to be the original brace that came with this car it just had the ends that was um rotted and i had to cut it and fabricate them i welded all this up yesterday i lost count but there's a lot of plug wells a whole bunch of plug wells here and these are the original leaf springs that i like to use when i'm mocking up the floor okay so there you got your trunk floor the main floor all right and your rear frame rails now, another tool I like to use are these ratchet straps, okay? They are great for the, for the project, all right? And then what I like to do is I will put the frame rails on the car, okay? And get these ears, that's this metal tab here that is uh, folded over like that. To get these ears nice and snug to the floor pan, all right? Where well, your torque, these are the rear torque boxes. No gaps, no nothing. Nice and tight, okay? And the reason you need the hammer is because sometimes they come to your house shipped, bend. So you need to hammer them for that you can have a nice tight fit. Also, hammer this tab down. And once I get the ratchet strap and I ratchet the rear frame rails nice and tight. I will start measuring the back of the rear frame rails, okay? Now, this being a 68 Firebird, you do have to modify the rear frame rails. And with that, I mean you need to cut them at the back. Okay, um, Jonathan at Vinyl Village Garage shared um, his routine, his way of doing it, which is a real cool routine and stuff like that. And me and Jonathan always sharing ideas with each other. 
This one, I did exactly how I did my 68. I felt comfortable because that's the way I did my 68 and it worked out for me. But the beauty about YouTube is you guys have a whole lot of YouTubers out there that are doing first gen cars also, Fibers and Camaros. And you guys could choose and pick any of the guys that you want to use their method of doing things that work. And my method is I cut them. And once I cut them, I add this back to it, weld it back on the car, on the rear frame rails, and I'll be fine. So, my measurements that I, I took from the original floor, and the reason you need to cut this is because this is your inner valance, okay? Your inner rear valance, okay? It's also um, called the rear, the inner tail light, sorry. But the rear balance here, you need to cut it. You need to cut these rear frame rails. All right. For this to have space on this lip to lie down here. And follow these contours. And once it lies down. And if you guys could see that, there's an angle there. This way. All right. It's not up and down. So don't cut up and down. And your measurements will be 2 inches and 7 eighths. Make a line at two inches, seven eighths, and when you cut it, give it that same angle like this is, okay? Not up and down because this panel here is not up and down. It's towards an angle, or you're not gonna have nothing to be correct. It won't, it won't match. And when this is lying down as an angle this way, facing down, it will be a nice tight fit on your gas tank brackets. All right. Then I like to once I have that done. And everything mocked up I will go back here and cut these ears okay right here and and weld it back here if I can have the factory look and also when I put the rear on um, valance inner valance here like I said or inner tail light here I'm able to weld you're gonna be welding them right here in this square section is where you're gonna be doing your plug welds right there so you do need metal to be here to plug weld it all right that's my method i like it that's the way i do it it works out for me then from the inner rear frame rail to this inner rear frame rails i got this measurement 43 and a quarter all right that's as close as factory i could possibly get Okay, when I measured the original, I got 43 and like an eighth, okay? So I'm just like an eighth over, which I feel that's fine. All right, and when you put the this um, inner tail panel here or inner balance, that's how she's supposed to be, see? Nice. That's why you got to cut it. Got to be nice and smooth here and lined up with the trunk floor. And as you guys can see here, she'll fit nice and tight on those ears on the gas tank brackets. All right. And as you pushed it in, look at how they fit on the frame rail. Nice and flush. And that's the way, that's what I use. That's the method that I use to do it. And once I have this measurement here, Okay, that 43 and, and, and a quarter that I got. And the frame rails are nice and tight with the ratchet strap. I put my self tappers for she not to move. All right. Then I come over here and I'll set my original leaf springs with the shackles. If not the originals, the ones you're going to use with the shackles and the... The perch pocket here, um, leaf spring eye. And this is notorious. That's why I've been so successful in building these cars. Well, if I'm using a jig, a rear frame rear jig, and being so successful that everything works fine. Because you need to make sure you have space here and the right measurements for the holes to match up. If you don't give the proper spacing 
for this these brackets here you're not gonna be able to mount it okay so you got to give yourself the right spacing watch the mounting holes like I said all the mounting holes on this one it goes right in it's not gonna fight me and from the inner um, rear frame rails to the other inner rear frame rails here I got 32 and a half I always like to take the measurement transfer that measurement from the measuring tape to wood because this this wood is about inch um, thick it's not gonna be flexing on me and this is how I do it I put it right here because I have found that a lot of the rear frame rails they like once you put your measurements and you zip this down they like to bulge out so to bulge them back in to that measurement that works that your leaf springs are gonna mount with no problems that side is exactly like this side I'll take a ratchet strap put it on this hole and that hole and ratchet it until they come close to each other at that measurement that I'm looking for okay my center line I like to use is that hole I always use that hole right there on these trunk floors this is Dynacorn this whole floor is Dynacorn by the way and I draw a line with a marker Sometimes I draw it all the way up. This time I just place my rulers for you guys to know where I'm talking about. And once I do that, I want to show you guys that it matches this side. And once I do that, see, that my mounting holes are exactly where I want them. Is when I use my self-tappers and I go ahead and screw it down there's no movements again so she's nice and solid now I still have a whole lot of self tappers to go but that's what I use guys this is the method that I use and trust me I won't be lying to you guys it works all the time all right another another great thing from using the the leaf springs are this this stud here and that stud is where your leaf springs will get mounted to a plate and that plate goes under your axle okay and if they not if and if your axle is not straight your car is going to be driving you know they call it like door walking you know it's not going to it's not going to be driving straight so right here you guys can see from stud to stud I'm sorry I don't have nothing going across but trust me from st stud to stud that axle is on the money all right, she is, I mean, excellent. I love it. It's reminding me when I did my 68 fiber, the white car, and everything fit like this. And then when it was time to put everything back, I did not have to fight anything because it just works, okay? You guys could see that right there, the spring shackle is going to go right there with no problem. And this is the method I use. Okay, you're also going to need some um, vice grips to keep the floor together for the meantime before you get um, to weld the whole floor together. If you guys want me to um, make a video of the process of welding the rear frame rails in the floor, what takes process in that, I'll make a video on it. I will show you at least where your welding um, points will be. And this is what it takes. I know a lot of guys are scared to do, um, they get terrified to do rear frame rails. But as long as you, you measure and you take this precaution. Listen, I don't have rear frame rail jigs. I don't have none of that, okay? Sometimes the floor on these cars that I get, they so bad that if I don't have the knowledge and the experience of all those years of, of, of messing with these cars, I will, I will be pretty lost, but I always go back to this. Go back to the basic. What do I need to do? I know I have to have everything correct to put it back together. So what should I use? Use the stuff that was on the car. There's no issues. If you're putting an original um, suspension on. Well, you don't have the original stuff. Make your order of your leaf springs. Place them down. Because you're going to be bolting it back down eventually. And get and get your rear frame rails to fit but I, I'm, I'm I'm telling you guys these are the measurements I have used all right and this is what works 
that's it bottom line this is exactly what works and by the way those are the ebay special rear frame rails they fit beautiful i mean they are nice and tight there's a bug there <laughs> um they fit nice and tight okay i'm not gonna run into no issues i really like that and the reason talking about nice and tight the reason i have these bolt kit here that i bought from harbor's freight is because when you see that the sheet metal does not fit nice and tight and let's say you have a gap in between that's kind of dark but you guys know what i'm talking about like a gap in between that you can't weld what i like to do is you drill a hole you put your washers on one on top one on the bottom the nut on the bottom and you start Tying it down and it will bring the metal close to each other for you can make your weld nice and strong and tight You want the sheet metal to be nice and tight when you're doing like rear frame rails and stuff like that These brackets here They have to be nice and tight your plug welds and they could be nice and structurally sound All right, but this is these these are my my measurements that I take Okay, and and it happens to work excellent I could guarantee you that when I put this floor on that car and it comes to the day to put the leaf springs back with the axle, I'm not going to be fighting nothing because all the guessing is out. Everything is done here, is over with, and I will be moving forward on to finish welding this um, floor complete and installing it on the car. Now, the negative, what I said in the beginning of the video what could be the negative side of trying to do a whole complete floor like this and weld it and then put it in the car of course this thing must weigh a lot i don't know exactly but it's going to weigh a lot the whole floor that you see here will be installed minus the leaf springs but i have a i have a buddy that's gonna come over and he's gonna help me um install the floor at least bring it into the car and i don't know if i'm going to put the convertible more forward move it forward or i'm going to put it on a dolly i'll make a dolly up roll it outside turn it around bring it back in the garage and then i could bring the floor out of the garage back around into the car but listen i'm always louis is always ready for a challenge i'm always willing to do different things to make the hobby more fun and keep it fun so this time around i'm trying something new and that is welding the complete floor away from the car and installing it later on well guys stay tuned i'm gonna start getting to plug weld this floor stay focused on your hobbies i wish you guys a lot of luck on your on your project and keep your hands dirty and your project will move forward. I promise you that. Another thing, you guys are going to need jack stands. I have two jack stands there. The goal is keep it inclined on the on the very front. And as it goes down, it starts to decline. It starts to go down, okay? And the reason you need that is for the metal to go up and get tight with those rear frame rails. But that's exactly how it looks, see? And in the back here, I have the, the trunk floor on a 2x4, the length of the trunk, of the trunk. Okay, and I always, always try to work with a bubble level to know that I'm building something pretty dead on. Alright, but once again, keep your hands dirty and your project will move forward. Take care now, bye bye.